What if we broke Zardy's maze? Now, two years ago, I released this game, but I've never tried breaking it or pushing it to its limits. So today, we're gonna do that. From a giant pumpkin jack army to screwing with Zardy. I hope you enjoy. And if you didn't know, to celebrate the two year anniversary, we released a really cool plush Zardy keychain. It's only available for a limited time. So click the link in the description below to get one before they are gone. All sales go towards the development costs of Zardy's Maze 2, so thank you for your continued support. Alrighty, Zardy, I'm sorry to do this, but today I'm going to be messing with you. And this is really weird because even though I was the person who made this game with a team of talented people, I've actually never sat down and tried to break my own game. Sure, I bug tested things, but actually go into it and mess with the values, that's something I haven't done. So I'm looking forward to this. Now, the idea is to make simple edits, essentially to make changes to basic parameters and see how the code behind the game actually takes on these changes. So first things first, let's turn Zardy to a really big boy. So for a lot of this, I'm going to have my character be invincible so that no jump scares can trigger when I'm going through these things, but we're going to make Zardy a very, very big lad. And as we make Zardy bigger and bigger, well, I start getting Attack on Titan vibes. Like there is this massive Titan crawling through the night sky, inching closer and closer towards me. And seeing Zardy's face way up in the sky, this massive being, it's kind of terrifying how the fog sort of obscures this giant. Like Zardy's face is as tall as the moon in this area, and uh, that's quite terrifying. Now moving on with a different test, I wanted to see what would happen if we moved Zardy out of bounds. So all the enemies in the game are basically tethered to the pathfinding that takes place within the maze. And with this pathfinding, um, I've never actually placed one of these enemies outside of the maze. So I was really curious to see if Zardy was in an area that he normally would not be in. And surprisingly, Zardy has no problem walking back to the maze on his own. Now, this is something that the pathfinding in the game anticipates, even though I completely forgot about it, but Zardy will try to walk back towards the maze to restore his walking path towards the player, and he will take any shortcut he can to get there, including walking through walls or corn. In the off chance that Zardy spawns somewhere he's not supposed to, this would hopefully fix the problem. But we move on. Next up, we want to take off Zardy's head. So we actually just go in and remove Zardy's head, and his body just has a floating hat above it. It's um a bit disturbing, so we're going to add it back on. But now I want to actually rotate the way Zardy approaches the player. So we're going to apply like an 80% or 90% rotation to Zardy's model or their prefab. And the way this is packaged actually makes it so that this change ruins the way that Zardy approaches the player. And by ruins, I think it makes it worse. When I'm looking around, Zardy is sort of just moving very quickly through the corn. Almost like in a horror film where you see something out of the corner of your eye. Like you try looking at Zardy and he just moves swiftly to a different area around you and he's always circling you. It definitely makes you a little bit uneasy and you don't know when sideways Zardy is gonna strike. Crazy teleportation Zardy aside, now it's time to turn him to a very wide boy. For peak meme quality, we're gonna just make Zardy wider and wider until he is, um, this thing, wide Zardy. Changing Zardy back to his original glory, we're now going to just hot swap the textures on Zardy from other characters. Now, these texture maps that I'm throwing on Zardy are not designed for this model. They're designed for other models. And we're just gonna take the Rattler texture and just start applying it to Zardy piece by piece and you get this abomination of mixed textures from the Rattler all around this model. Zardy is looking a bit different in his corn camouflage, and at this point, we're now going to duplicate Zardy. So I decided to spawn in multiple Zardys, so we have about 20 Zardys total. Now, the problem with Zardy is that when he teleports around and tries to close in on the player, all the clones of Zardy are actually going to stack on top of each other. You can't really tell that there's multiple Zardis in front of me, but there's actually a lot. And when I shine my light on them, you can see that the light is just blown out, but none of the Zardis appear to be fading. And that's because there's like 20 Zardis standing in that same spot, all in the same animation cycle, so they line up perfectly. And so instead of fading away, Zardi just sort of snaps out of existence and uh, unloads. But enough torturing Zardi. Zardi, you're free to go. I'm gonna be moving on to your companions now. So similar to Zardi, I wanted to move these other enemies out of bounds. So we place Pumpkin Jack out of bounds and he will walk back to the maze similar to Zardi. Except Pumpkin Jack's kind of interesting because he can also walk on top of the corn. I'm gonna be honest, 
Um, I didn't know this was a thing because it would never normally happen during bug testing. But yeah, Jack is very nimble and can walk on top of the corn. Moving the brute out of bounds will cause the brute to move back to the position no matter what. Even if we put the brute underground, the brutes will fly through the ground back to their default flying position. Cable Crow is kind of interesting because the way we designed their animation makes it so that even if we move Cable Crow while their hand is shooting off, Cable Crow's arm will always reach the pillar no matter how far away it is. Now, the way the animation is designed is that when contact with the pole is made, we actually swap to a different animation, and this causes Cable Crow to move back to the pillar they were on before. So unfortunately, they do not retract from the position we moved them to, but they'll snap back to their previous location instantly. Now, I really want to push Zardy's maze to its limits. So we're going to spawn in 1,000 pumpkin jacks and see how crazy things can become. And so I enter this map and I load in a thousand pumpkin jacks and looking through the scene viewer in Unity, you can see all these different arrows that we have tied to the top of the models. This is dev artwork that basically lets us know at a glance what direction the model is facing when we're looking at an overhead view. But you can see all these little arrows and pumpkin jacks spreading through this map like ants. They're crawling over every inch and corner of this map. Now, some of you may not know this, but when you kill a pumpkin crawler, these small pumpkins that grab your ankles when you're walking through the maze, upon their death, it actually calls all the pumpkin jacks in the map to that location. Think of it as setting off like a flare, and every pumpkin jack is gonna rush back to the spot where the pumpkin crawler died. And of course, I have invincibility on, because if I did not, I would die really, really fast. It is absolute chaos as these pumpkin jacks all funnel into this part of the maze. There are so many pumpkin jacks running to this location and jumping to this area, and the game is really, really struggling to keep up. So much so that some of the pathfinding for the pumpkin jacks is getting broken. There's like pumpkin jacks running through the corn and not jumping, probably because there's too many trying to cross the corn at the same time. So the logic behind pumpkin jack is failing. The sound of the stampede is just absurd. So I wanted to try something different. I took all these pumpkin jacks, doing a massive pumpkin jack select all, and then I moved them out of bounds into a giant field. Now their programming is telling them to run back to the maze and get inside it. So what you have is this massive stampede, like out of the Lion King, except it's all pumpkin jacks running towards the maze. It's a very surreal experience, but once this was over, I decided to move the mob at a 45 degree angle outside of the maze. Now, this is gonna make it so that the quickest path back to the maze is a straight shot to the corner of the maze. So this causes all the pumpkin jacks to run back to the corner of the maze, the closest position to them, and this makes them all run in a line and basically create a pumpkin jack train. Trying to look at this train with my camera um, was definitely bogging down my computer. Anything normally not within the camera's view isn't rendered, but in this case, all the pumpkin jacks are in my line of sight, so all of them are rendering on the camera. And thus, my computer is crawling. I decided to turn on universal brightness in the scene view so that you can see all these pumpkin jacks running with proper lighting. And we can even freeze the game and show you what all these jacks look like when they're trying to run through each other. It's a very bizarre combination of pumpkin jacks that forms this very long line and all these pumpkin jacks are just dying to get back inside the maze. And that concludes just a few examples of messing with Zardy's maze. If you liked this exclusive look behind the scenes, let me know. And as a reminder, pick up a keychain now if you want one, because they're here for a limited time for spooky season, and unfortunately they will not last forever. You'll find a link in the description below. And if you haven't already, you can also wishlist Zardy's Maze 2 on Steam by clicking the other link in the description below. Thank you guys so much for watching, and as always, I'll see you in the next video. Cheers!